Hey guys, what's up? Josh Fierstein here. Look, I want to show you the truth and the real agenda behind the landmark Supreme Court decision today. Oh great, more conspiracy theories on how America is being taken over by Satan. Now, I realize that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to call me homophobic, going to call me a bigot, going to call me this and that, because I get it all the time. Let me just go ahead and preface this entire statement by saying I love homosexual people. As a Christian, I mean, the, the, the message of the cross is one of love beyond boundaries. G How loving you are that you fear that being gay will bring the end of the earth itself. Yeah, such a loving God indeed. Seriously, if your God has really an issue with homosexuality, then he would at least do a better job preventing homosexuality. I mean, it's not like God's power are limited. Seriously, if a God exists, then why would this God have an issue over something that is part of nature? Jesus didn't just love the people that, that mourned for him or, or the people that buried him or the people that prayed for him. No, no, no. Jesus didn't just love the guy that carried his cross. He loved the guy that crucified him and beat him and whipped him and killed him. Yeah, such a smart God. Instead of doing something as simple as just show himself towards people and say that you just need to follow by his rule, and well, there's nothing that the humans can do towards God. Someone throws a rock at him and the rock just gets destroyed. Nothing can touch God. But instead, he basically impregnated a female who is a virgin and gave birth to Jesus, who would grow up to the age of 35 to get nailed on the cross, and then three days later, he would come back from the dead, even though nobody questions why it took three days for Jesus to come back to life. Or maybe he never did die. He was just unconscious for three days and woke up. And then everyone was high on mushrooms. Yeah, such a smart God. He loved everybody. And so my love is the same. However, at the same time, let me, let me just kind of... I don't know, clear up some misconceptions that even Christians have. I had somebody today that said, I'm a Christian and I support gay marriage. Really? That's impossible. You can be gay or be in support of gay marriage and still be a Christian because of the New Testament. Christians are supposed to follow the New Testament and not the old one. The New Testament never mentions homosexuality directly. It only mentions it in parts in prostitution. So if you justify your hatred of gays by using the Old Testament, then you have to follow everything in the old one. Otherwise, it's just nitpicking parts and you just choose what to follow. That's not exactly how it works. It's like playing a game of football and you don't want to, you don't want to follow some of the rules. So what you do is ignore certain rules and still call yourself a football player. That's why Obama's not a Christian, because you cannot be a Christian and support gay marriage. That's like, that's oxymoronical and more moronical than oxy. Ha 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 wow. That's stupid. Why? Because it's like saying that, uh, I don't know, someone from PETA supports hunting. You're right about that, but PETA still kills animals. Just check out the shelters. It's something that you have to be diametrically opposed to because ultimately the word of God is opposed to it, but... Yes, a god has a problem with two men having sex. All the humanity. Let me show you exactly why this is dangerous for Christians. There's been an agenda all along. First, the LGBT movement asked for civil unions, and guess what? We gave it to them. And we played into a strategy. We refused to draw a line in the sand, and here's what ends up happening. Anybody that knows the strategic spirit of a predator is this. You take insignificant things one at a time. You don't just try to walk in and blow open the front door with a 12-gauge shotgun and just demand them. No, 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 no. You, you sneak in the back door and you take things that are insignificant because people will just give up the insignificant. But sooner or later, you give enough inches and you've gone a mile. Well, that's a fancy way to put on how certain groups get certain rights over time. The same can be said about blacks in America where they were oppressed, and it took over a hundred years for them to get equality. I may not be able to live long enough to see gays in India to get the same treatment as, well, everybody else, but progress is in, in fact slow because of bigots like yourself. If it was that simple, then slavery and racism would have ended years ago. Think about this, because here's what's going to happen next. Now that same-sex marriage has been constitutionalized, now it's going to be illegal for a Christian minister to refuse a same-sex couple. Oh God, the fucking horror! 
They've already tested it with the Indiana bakeries. Now what's next? They're coming for the churches. That's been the plan all along because now the Bible's going to be hate speech. And if you won't marry or hire or allow into ministry a homosexual person, you are going to be labeled hateful. You refuse service because these people are gay. Oh yeah, you're not being bigoted or hateful at all. Hate crime? Pastors are going to be ripped out of pulpits? You don't think it's possible? Then why does Coeur d'Alene, Idaho already try it? Go Google it yourself. You're going to see it's true. Why? Because ultimately, they're going to come after Christians. Or all conservative Christians need to see that being gay is no different than being straight. Now, I realize that people say, but Obama's a Christian. No, he's not. He just pretended like one to get into office. Next thing you gotta tell me that Obama is a lizard man and he eats babies and fart rainbows. Look at his morals. Look at his values. He's not a Christian that supports same-sex marriage or abortion or the Muslim agenda. Now, interestingly enough, why aren't they coming after Muslims? Why are they only coming after Christians? The simple answer is this, because America is mostly Christian. The Christian Bible says to love homosexual people. You don't accept the lifestyle because it's wrong. I'm sorry, it's wrong. We're also not supposed to eat pig or wear certain type of fabrics, but you know, here we are, we're doing it anyway. And I know you love to eat pig. The, that, that, that's not me saying that. That's the Bible saying that. That's not me condemning and being judging. That's the Bible saying it's wrong. But guess what? There's people that love them enough to tell them. And you see, people today say, well, you just need to preach love. No, you need to preach truth in love. There's a big difference. But slowly but surely, our rights are being taken away. What right are you even talking about? The right to preach the truth? Well, I'm sorry, but your preaching is hateful. If you want to talk about God's love for people, fine. If you want to express your beliefs on how God saved the world or something, then that's fine. But telling gays that their lifestyle choice is wrong is hate speech. It doesn't matter on how you put it.